TechSavvy is an independent, competitive internet service provider. And in areas around our headquarters in southwestern Ontario, we're building our own fiber to the home networks and we're expanding our wireless footprint. But most of our business is providing internet and phone service to over 300,000 people, residential and business uh, users, in every province in Canada. To understand how we do that without having an access network that actually connects to their homes, you need to understand how service-based competition works in Canada. When you talk about competition in the telecommunications space, people used to think that meant different companies competing to build out their networks, and some people still picture that. Uh, in fact, if you look at your home without understanding how the service-based competition works, you might think that too. I live over in Gatineau. Uh, my house has two sets of wires coming into it, one from the big old phone company and one from the big uh, old cable company. And there's also a satellite dish on the roof that probably hasn't been used in at least a decade, presumably from when there was no wireline internet there, possibly when there was no cable TV. That kind of competition is facilities-based competition. Multiple companies competing to build telecom facilities. Once those facilities connect to the premise, uh, then, of course, they would provide the service to those end users. To understand how service-based competition works, you need to know a little bit about how internet traffic travels. It's not technical. It's also not a series of tubes. I don't quite know the right metaphor, but for these purposes, it's more like a branching system of pipes. Um, from your home, your internet traffic goes down a wire or a pipe. It's owned by the phone company or the cable company in general. And it goes to some node in your neighborhood where it joins up with wires, pipes from other homes in your neighborhood. Uh, and they feed into a larger pipe that goes to another node where more traffic aggregates into those pipes. And it keeps joining up with larger and larger, um, larger and larger pipes uh, until eventually it gets to a central office or a hub, some kind of location that probably feeds a large part of the city uh, or possibly your whole town. From there, it's backhauled to some place like an internet exchange where all of the traffic from a whole province might gather. And that's where internet service providers connect it to uh, the internet or to other services. Uh, of course, traffic heading to you from the internet travels the same path, but in the opposite direction, gradually being routed down smaller and smaller pipes until it makes its way to your house. I know they're not really pipes, it's just a metaphor. The parts of the network that are closer to your home, that's called the last mile, and that's the access network. The larger pipes that are further from your home, that's a distribution network or a transport network. If the ISP owns that entire network, then the only competition is facilities-based competition. Uh, any phone company, any incumbent phone company, incumbent cable company like a TELUS or a Shaw or a Bell or Rogers or Videotron uh, competing for the number of locations that they can add to their network by actually running the wires from one end to the other. If that's the only form of competition that we had, then you would only ever have two competitors in any area. It just isn't efficient for more companies to build more wires connecting to every home. So third and fourth competitors would just never emerge, or very rarely. A service-based competitor like TechSavvy works differently. We invest in our own equipment at the internet exchange or at a point of presence near the internet exchange. And then we have our own peering arrangements to share traffic with the internet or with other service providers at that point. And then to get internet service to the customer's home, we use our own network that we build out as far as it is efficient to do so. We build sort of a parallel system of pipes that go, go out pretty far toward your, into your city or into your neighborhood, perhaps. And then we interconnect with the incumbent's network at that point. Um, because they're the only ones that still have lines connected to your home. So rather than building more wires to connect to everybody's house, we buy wholesale service on just that last mile, just that access network to reach the end users. 
And then in theory, at least, we pay a fair rate to, for the wholesale service along that access network um, at a rate that, uh, that compensates the incumbent for the costs of building that network and includes a significant guaranteed markup on that cost so that they make a profit on it as well. So that's how Tech Savvy operates. We currently buy wholesale network access services to the access networks from seven incumbents across the country. And we have our own facilities, networks, points of presence, interconnection points in every province to support those services, not to mention facilities to carry traffic across the country. You can imagine why we're touchy about being called resellers. We're not reselling any service, in fact. Uh, the wholesale access that we buy is merely one input for the service that is mostly provided on, uh, on our own facilities. Of course, carriers only sell us those wholesale access services because they're required to by the CRTC, which sets access rates that include guaranteed 30 and 40% markups for the carriers. Bell Canada in particular has uh, explicitly said that they have no business interest in uh, wholesale access services despite that guaranteed profit margin. They see it as nothing more than a mandated service, suggesting that they would get much higher profits by instead controlling the market and excluding competitors altogether. Now, the picture could be very similar for mobile services, with service-based competitors like Tech Savvy investing in our own networks and interconnecting with incumbents to buy radio services to reach end users. And that's roughly what's called a mobile virtual network operator, an MVNO model, which the CRTC is now exploring. Once that happens, maybe we will have service-based competition for mobile services in Canada. For now, we don't, uh, which is why I'm focusing here on wireline internet service. Now think about this. The only efficient way to create competition is through this wholesale model where competitors like Tech Savvy buy last mile network services from incumbents, which means we rely on those incumbents to deliver their access services to us and our customers. But those same incumbents also offer retail services, meaning they compete directly with us for those same customers. The tension in that uh, dynamic creates a lot of opportunities for incumbents to game the system and make things difficult for us and our customers. Sometimes these are issues that should be totally trivial. For example, when a customer contacts Tech Savvy for service, we need to find out whether the underlying carrier even has service at that address or in that neighborhood, since we would have to order the last mile service to connect to their home. But carriers don't tell us their footprints. Instead, they each provide a different tool where we can look up the address. And each tool is fraught with its own problems. Sometimes they provide a portal where we can search for it, look it up. In other cases, we literally send an email to the provider, to the, the incumbent carrier, asking them if they have service at that location. And then we wait for a response, sometimes for days, while the customer waits to find out if they can even place an order with us. And not to pick on Bell, but Bell regularly marks addresses incorrectly in their database as only having fiber service, not having traditional copper. And we don't have access to their fiber yet, so that's a very important distinction. When a customer calls us to get service that we would deliver through Bell's last mile, we need to rely on Bell's own self-servingly inaccurate information about whether that service is even available in the first place. So those are the simple issues. Sometimes the issues are more complex, often involving rates and other very fundamental uh, issues. The CRTC sets the rates that we pay for the wholesale services, and of course, those rates are often set far too high. In 2016, some of the most significant rates that we paid were found to have been inflated by over 17 times for the previous five years. As an industry during that time, we overpaid the incumbents by over $300 million. Worse still, those inflated rates meant that we had to set retail prices that were higher than they ought to have been for our customers. In a sense, by inflating their wholesale rates to us, Bell and the other incumbents made us complicit in propping up 
inflated retail prices. Here's another good example of the kinds of barriers that incumbents create for us, installation timelines. If you order internet service from an incumbent, they can often get it installed the next day, or in some cases, later the same day. As a wholesale-based competitor, we can't even request an installation date that's sooner than five business days away. That's an immediate disadvantage for us that is totally within the carrier's control. All of that being said, by creating a space for real competition, the wholesale framework brings important benefits to consumers and to the retail market. First, it gives consumers options in a market where there would otherwise only be one or two players. Service-based competition built on a wholesale framework allows many competitors to operate, each making their own investments to build networks where it's efficient to do so, and paying fair rates for last mile services where that's more efficient. More broadly, by allowing competitors a measure of control over the services we can provide, the wholesale framework has allowed competitors to innovate in other ways beyond lower ro retail rates. TechSavvy was one of the first to offer unlimited internet services because we fought to make sure that the wholesale framework was structured in a way that allowed us to do so. And with more competitors in the market, it all comes down to how you treat your customers. TechSavvy has always felt strongly about protecting our customers and treating them fairly. We've taken strong positions to protect our customers' privacy, including publishing regular transparency reports and challenging copyright enforcement against our customers. Ultimately, when wholesale rates are set properly, and when the regulatory decision makers' gears are in motion, a mandated wholesale framework can strike a balance that allows service-based competition to develop where otherwise it would not. It drives down prices for consumers, and it guarantees a return on investment for companies that build the last mile networks, all while guarding against the monopolistic tendencies of our telecom and broadcasting incumbents. Thank you, and I'm happy to take some questions if there's some time. Thank you. Yep, that's right. Thank you, Andy. Give one more round for Andy. <clears throat> So we've talked about a lot of barriers uh, that stop people from accessing the internet and increasingly affordability uh, came up in our panels today about it's not just whether or not you can physically get it, but how can you afford it once it's there. So we are going to have an entire panel discussion based on this. It's going to be led by Bram Abramson, our moderator. He is a Toronto-based technology data and communications lawyer who sits on the Ontario Securities Commission's FinTech Advisory Committee. He's also on the Canadian Internet Registry Authority's Community Investment Committee. He's the past director of the Commission for Complaints for Telecom, Telecom Television Services, a graduate of the WIFT Media Leadership Program. He holds a Fellow of Information Privacy and Certified In-House Counsel. But most excitingly, he is a licensed private investigator. Please invite my friend Magnum PI, Bram Abramson. Okay. <laughs>